you can try to ignore the fact that I'm doing a vanity fair pose this whole video. So we've already covered what cosmopolitanism is, who Diogenes was, Cynic philosopher, and he was a crazy old man who was in three different city-states of ancient Greece. And most of his records of his life are missing. This has been a very long time. He isn't probably taking good care of his writings. But that's a side from the point. And we've covered... I might argue that um, this is going to be a hard thing for me to talk about. Because I'm going to try to refute cosmopolitanism and I've never saw a world government you can ask well what about United Nations Treaty of Versailles and certain things like that those are alliances they're not world governments they're factions I'm talking about a sort of official thing that everyone has to fall through with an actual supreme state that all nations have to deal with. One of these I can think of is, because uh, I never thought about this before, you can ask, well, try looking at it in different Like in the United States, we divide our government based off feds and state. And by state, I mean a different definition of state. And state is sort of this weird. Well, that's the second point. Constitution would advocate things that normally people would generally be mixed of, that they would try to integrate everything. Keep things integrated. Keep something segregated. Some presidents might do that. Because they'll realize that some fights would break through, like the Civil War. Other was would pressure it through. They would try to force everyone to integrate. That's what would happen on the scale of a world government to a entire country or alliance of countries even. They would generally advocate things that certain people would be mixed of. And how come this wouldn't work? Well because there's a difference between interactions of two parts of a nation and two different nations. If you might all states are utopian, I already said that. And how does this fantasy structure work? Well, the fantasy structure works in many different mysticisms. Because everyone has a different mysticism. See they could be conflicted and these conflictions can cause people to keep the markets away from certain people and by doing that or keeping sea routes and other things away from people that they would have a demand for for example if I keep the trade route which connects the United States to the Caribbean islands they would try to gun me down if I had a nation. And wars happen when there's differing views and forced integration can either make it worse or have people just accept it. Even forced segregation is also a problem. At this point you wonder, well Alright, well, how is this different from a civil war? With a civil war, both sides are being hurt, and so it's easier for one to quit. So the United States is being divided into two, the east side, the west side. Then you can imagine that because both sides are being damaged, that it would eventually have to stop. Because 
Civil Warfare is like Guerrilla World Warfare in many ways. It's the worst kind of warfare. But there are general rules, unlike a guerrilla warfare. Just not as much. A second degree away from being a guerrilla warfare. That's a tangent, and now let's get into the complicated part. What about isolationist states? Wouldn't they generally like to stay away from other businesses? Well, that's not the case, because they also have to follow with the other people's rules. The United States can't mess around with the seas. Back when I was isolationist, Japan can do a or oh, keep the markets doing strange things, even though they're not associated with anyone that much. All associations have to be to put to a minimum. I advocate laws that their nation doesn't like, and I'm this freak who's keeping things at a distance, then it doesn't matter, I'll still get gunned down to a certain extent. And that's why the United States has tried to keep seas open World War I for democracies, World War II f away from fascism and violence and all that crap. Uh, Civil War, they try to keep the seas free from communism. And now it's trying to keep seas full democracy away from radicalism. So you can see that the United States is very, very good with that rhetoric, that fantasy structure. It keeps them pressing it on and on and on. And yeah, it's pretty good. Because it means that they're fucking themselves over along with all of us, which sucks. And I think people should be able to realize this, but if they don't, then they don't. I'm not a man who pretends to be surprised when people advocate stuff that's ridiculous. Went back from me trying to get into a TED to avoid alternative arguments. So, how the hell would these world governments deal with war? Well, they would have their own military, and this military would be, I'd say, at a higher quality than maybe another military from a country, because it is the world military. So I'm sure it probably receives the most funding, best defense, and over dramatic, scrupulous bullshit like that. So, you either force integrations or segregations of certain policies, and you would try and keep everything unified, keep the faction going between all nations of the world. And it shows that the state can't calculate people, people are unpredictable. People cannot, unless you're this really intelligent computer thing and you can predict everything that people are about to do, which there are things like computers like that, but even then, in a scale of billions and billions of people, I doubt it. You can't calculate what people are going to do. You can't calculate how to solve these problems. You can only make valuizations at this point. As the state doesn't realize. And so what makes you think that a fucking world government will be able to do that? They're going to be even more lost. They're going to see that there's people who advocate slavery, people who don't advocate slavery, they're going to go, well, I never knew this was the case. I thought slavery was something that people generally disliked. And then they, they don't know what they're going to do with these conflicts, these religious things, these fanaticisms. They're going to try to make a valuization of what to do. But they don't know how much military they need to defend themselves. 
how much of one side is trying to disassociate with the union, the ratio between that, they don't know the ratio between the ability of people to leave a union and the people who will be dead weight and keep the union going between all these countries. They can't calculate all that stuff. Polycentric law system where this defense do I do know alright, well they got a few tanks, not as much as ours. And if we do this, this and this, they retaliate, then so be it. After market ratio to ours we could basically deal with them. They won't make it on their own. They need us. It's not even because it should be a stateless society. So this would be a conflict between two different zones and not some world government. I kind of, kind of go on a ramble here. But what do you expect? They want to be able to know what to do. Kind of like we don't know what the hell we're able to do back in the Civil War. The thing with Abraham Lincoln was that he decided to push things to the next level. That's why the Confederacy lost. He decided to wage the total war. He decided to take things to the next level. He decided to... Well, I already said that. Decided to suspend the writ of habeas corpus, use the Constitution to extend his powers, do absolutely everything it takes to break shit and wreak havoc. You know, burn women and children. Start the bloodiest war day of the United States history. The bloodiest, not one of the bloodiest. It's the. And that's how he was able to be so successful. Because he was a fucking G. And. I think I'm running out of things to say. I'm becoming scarce. For my next videos, I'll probably tackle on the Venus Project because someone brought it up in JTV, and I really only have two minutes on the clock. Regardless. I'm probably not going to do a part three. I might do it, but probably not. Why? Well, because it'd be a waste of time at this point. I already got the point done. These people wouldn't be able to handle real wars, not those guerrilla wars or civil wars. War be wars between people completely different fantasy structures that they can only make valuations they can't calculate what they need to do at this point of world government so, so many different variables and I don't think I was 100% on the money I think I this is probably gonna be like a rough video and then in one month I'll do a new two-part video or two months or three you never know with me. Could even take seven months. Well, at least it didn't make it into some sort of 1984 bull prep. That would have killed any legitimacy. Well, I got 38 seconds on the clock, and I'd like to tell you guys that if you want to speak to me in live, get an account on Justin TV, go to Chocolate Factory. Or Mr. Walker 7, I have the same fucking username. And if you want to speak to me about these things live, you can do it there. Because I don't really like using anything else other than this side and JTV. Just Mr. Walker 7, and fuck you all. Suck my dick.